right now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Nightly Sports Call. All right, Ken, thanks very much. Good evening, everyone. It's a Friday night, and we are talking sports with you. Welcome to the Sports Call. 412-575-2600 is the number of the Bordis and Bordis hotline. You can tweet us tonight at KD Pomp at Paul Zeiss. We have high school highlights and scores of four semifinals coming up tonight at 11 on KDK TV. But we're talking about two big wins last night, one by the Steelers, one by the Pittsburgh Penguins. Paul Zeiss of the Post-Gazette 93.7 The Fan is here. And Paul, when we saw the Steelers play last night, we saw the best of their efforts uh, of so far this entire season. Not only did they score 30, they scored 40. And their defense put up some pretty good numbers against a, an up-and-coming quarterback who did not look all that good, Marcus Mariota. Four interceptions, five sacks, but it was the impressive fourth quarter more than anything else that uh, is something they've been waiting for all season long. And it's encouraging to know they have a lot of home games left and they play well at home. Yeah, and I think the big thing is, you know, that right after the half there, um, Mariota hit the 75-yard touchdown pass. Looked like there might be some momentum, and the Steelers went right down the field and scored, you know, to kind of take the momentum back to the game. Whenever they needed to answer in that game, they did. Um, that I thought their defense played extremely well. I know they gave up some big plays, uh, but at the end of the day, they only gave up 17 points. And, the, you know, the takeaways are huge. The only, thing I, the only thing I would say is, you know, they had a game plan that works against Dick LeBeau's defense, probably because they've seen that same exact game plan used against them a thousand times. Um, what will they do when they play the Patriots? I mean, really, uh, unfortunately, yeah. this season boils down to that game. But it bodes well because that one game is in Pittsburgh, and right. I think if they have a chance to win, it's got to be here. Uh, but they also cannot stumble along the way. I, I think it's going to be interesting to watch uh, the Patriots who spent all week out west at Air Force Academy. They played in Denver. They wanted to stay in the high altitude because they're going to go to uh, New Mex or to Mexico City and play a game against Oakland. You'll yeah. see that game Sunday on KDK at 425. That'll be a good test, but they, you know, that's a pretty high altitude over there. So uh, hopefully they can lose a game along the way and the Steelers can have a cushion going into that game. Yeah, and I think that's a tough, you know, that's a, no matter what, that's a tough uh task for, for uh, New England to have to do two games yep. like that, stay out, uh, be out in the altitude, be away from home for basically two weeks almost, you know, um, and then come all the way back, you know, travel all the way back and then have to try and play a game the next Sunday. So I think really um, maybe that's a – they don't lose the Raiders game, but whatever their next game is after that is the one they lose. Well, it sets up well for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And quite frankly, if you're asking me how important home field is, it's very important – especially because you want to avoid Foxborough. Let me ask you something. What would you think the point spread would be if they played in Gillette Stadium again for an ASU championship game or if they played here in Pittsburgh? Tell me the two different point spreads as you see it. If it was there, probably like six and a half. It was if here, it's here, if it's, it's here, it would be like two and a half probably. Or a pick them or a half game yeah, or something. I, I, probably like, I think the Patriots would be favored by maybe one or two here. You know, But I think maybe like five and a half, six and a half there. Yeah, it was encouraging to see the Steelers get their uh, get their game on offensively. So they're six and one this year against AFC teams, eight and two overall. As that was going on, the Penguins put together one of their best road efforts of the year, limiting Ottawa, a good team, to just 22 shots. Matt Murray made one of the best saves you're ever going to see on Mike Hoffman in that game, and they got some late goals in the second period to give them a lead. Really good hockey. They won three to one. Tomorrow they're home. They got a lot of home games, just like the Steelers coming up here. Yeah. And they got Chicago in town. They got pasted by the Blackhawks ten to one the last time they played uh, in the game. That, you know, when Antti Niemi right. was in. Exactly. He get Yang. Yeah. Murray came in. He didn't do any good. And ten one. So they'll remember that. I think. Yeah, and I mean, I think the thing that's tough about it is, you know, it's November hockey, so there's going to be ups and there's going to be downs. You know, it's funny. The same people who, you know, a week ago when the Penguins didn't look so good. We're trying to tell everyone, oh, it's just November hockey, it doesn't matter. Now they won last night and it looked real impressive. See, 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 it's still <laughs> November hockey, you know. It is. You're going to dismiss their losses and the way that they've played in some of their bad games. You just got to say it's a long, long season. I think they'll be okay against Chicago. That's, t that's the type of game that this group probably yeah. will get up to play to sort of set the record straight a little bit. All right, when we come back, I'm going to ask Paul this question, and I also ask you this question, 412-575-2600. Did you like... NBC Sports experimentation with Skycam. A lot of people didn't. A lot of people did. A lot of people up in the air. 
What do you think? Call and air your opinion. I'll ask Paul what he thought about it, and I'll give you my impressions as well. That's all coming up right here live. It is the nightly sports call on the Board of Some Borders Hotline. We're looking for your opinions next right here on Pittsburgh CW.